Hello, my name is Anthony Raphael Leon. I am a certified health specialist. What I do is enlighten, encourage, and empower people to take back their own health. This is done through education of how the human body is designed to function, what we do to sabotage our health, and what we can do to correct these ill conditions through applying simple yet effective principles to bring the body back into balance. What you're about to listen to is about a 10 minute segment from the first chapter of my book entitled, Digestion Takes Precedence Over Disease. Take an uncanny journey from mouth to anus. If you feel a little uneasy about the subject matter, it's probably because it's where most have never gone before. Chapter one is called a reality check, and you'll see why after you've listened. So sit back, relax, and take in this powerful dose of knowledge. Death from prescription drugs, unnecessary surgeries, not to mention infections or germs, kind of scary. Let's talk about that for a moment. There was an expose on 2020, October 14, 2005, showing how hospitals are not as clean as we thought. The headline showed, Hospital infections kill tens of thousands every year. The expose was so frightening that I believe anyone viewing it in a hospital's care would experience feelings similar to impending doom. Please be advised, you as the patient have a full right to quality health care and should demand it. Doctors and nurses shouldn't feel offended otherwise because it's their job and you are a paying customer that expects quality service. One patient was only 63 years old who had surgery to fix her broken shoulder and contracted an infection that left her immobilized. Four months later, she died. Betsy McCauley, a former lieutenant governor of New York and founder of the Committee to Reduce Infection Death, said, These infections kill as many people each year in our country as AIDS, breast cancer, and auto accidents combined. She also said, most states have not required hospitals to report their infections or provide that information to the public. Dr. Rick Shannon, who was chief of medicine at Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh at the time, had viewed the data on patients in the hospital's ICU and was shocked. He said, 51% of everyone who got these infections died. Half the people who got one died. After his findings, Dr. Shannon gave the order to the ICU staff to reduce infections to zero in 90 days. The nurses thought it couldn't be done. Here's the shocker. After a week of his order, the hospital staff acknowledged the culprit was themselves. Each one had their own particular way of washing their hands, changing dressings and catheters. Dr. Shannon said no one actually knew what the right way to do it was. And not knowing what the right way to do it was, that all these little errors could creep in that would lead to infection. What a mess. The problem was finally corrected after 90 days, where the hospital went from 49 to zero infections. This was accomplished by some simple procedures that should have been standard in the first place. Procedures like washing their hands before coming in contact with each patient and raising the beds of patients 30 degrees to prevent pneumonia. Maybe there should be more exposés to keep these and several other industries on their toes when it comes to us the consumer receiving quality products and care. Betsy McCauley said, the public has a right to this information. If you're going to a hospital, you should be able to find out which hospital in your area has a serious infection problem. So you can stay away from that hospital. She goes on to say, ask doctors and nurses to clean their hands before touching you. If you're worried about being too aggressive, just remember your life is at stake. I urge every concerned citizen of this great nation to check out the movie Sicko. I would say this is journalism at its best, not just exposing this country's healthcare deplorable state, but giving us a reality check that the arm of flesh will fail you every time. We have to realize that doctors are people too. They're not aliens from another planet or Zen monks possessing superhuman powers. They have the same problems that you and I have like being overworked and dealing with common stressors of everyday life. I suppose sometimes we forget that they possess human traits. Take for instance, doctors have the highest occurrence of suicides amongst themselves than even the general populace, according to OBGYN News, March 1, 2003. Believe it or not, the suicide rate is even higher among female doctors, according to Medscape General Medicine, May 19, 2004. 
Who's to say what the reason could be for their despair? Maybe they started out on the right foot, believing they can heal the world by their many talents and contributions to medical science. Then to find themselves at a dead end, realizing they're in a futile quest to save a sick and dying world full of diseases. Afterwards, trying to escape reality by using and abusing the same drugs they administer to their patients. Let's not place all the blame on doctors, but look toward ourselves for the burden of responsibility. Look toward our own contribution to high disease and mortality rates. Let's begin with obesity on the rise, with our fast food nation, supersizing every chance we get and stuffing our faces full of junk food, which is really anything not wholesome or in its natural state. If you would like to see a good example of how bad fast food really is, check out the movie Supersize Me. Can you really rely on health care when insurance companies have strenuous requirements for you to be accepted or approved for coverage with high deductibles equaling or surpassing vehicle or home insurance and prescription medications not even covered by the same insurance premium you're paying top dollar for your health coverage? On top of that, the meds are only 30% to 50% effective in 90% of those who use them. According to Dr. Alan Roses, executive vice president for an enormously large pharmaceutical company, these odds are worse than the placebo effect, which is about 50% to 70% effective. When was the last time you heard they found a cure for anything? All that money raised for Jerry's kids. And where's all that money going for breast cancer? It sickens me to my stomach to know that people are dying because they bought into the scam of cure. Some of you even settle for remission. Why would anyone want to settle for less than perfect health? Doctors push drugs for symptoms. Nutritionists push supplements for deficiencies. And naturopaths push herbs for treatment. What's wrong with this picture? Who's pushing health? Going to the source. The cause of disease must have its root where the body is not able to compensate for the demands placed upon it. The question that needs to be hard pressed is, what is the demand that is placed upon the body that it cannot compensate for? Our bodies are governed by natural laws, or shall I say, the laws of the universe that were given by God himself, so that everything created may be decent and in order. Natural law corroborates the fact that expenditure at a rate you can't compensate for causes disease aging and death, or dad for short. We should know you can't fool mother nature, nor stop father time. If we expect to live a long and healthy life, you must assist mother nature, which will slow down father time. So when we look at disease, aging, and death, instead of placing the burden of blame on the healthcare system, there needs to be an execution for the burden of responsibility, which lies with each and every one of us. This is what it boils down to. Degenerative diseases and conditions are brought upon us by a poor diet and an uncooperative lifestyle, not including birth defects or inherited weaknesses that may need a bit more assistance than usual. The root cause is our intemperance, our overindulgence of things that rob health without regards to their effects on our mental and physical well-being, and not supplying ourselves with enough of the good things in the right form that God intended. Then we expect the doctors to patch us up for all the self-inflicted harm we bring upon ourselves. More than often, when we go to a doctor's office and they give us sound advice sending us on our way, we feel cheated when not given a prescription for drugs we really don't need. However, on the other hand, modern medicine can't survive without us depending upon them. This is because modern medicine is less of an art or a science. It's a business. Just imagine if we all became completely drug-free for one day. I'm referring to prescription and over-the-counter drugs. And how would they affect the stock market? There would be billions of dollars lost by an industry that's addicted to our money because we're so addicted to their drugs. Food for thought. If all the drugs were cast into the sea, it would be so much better for man and so much worse for the fishes. Oliver Wendell Holmes. In order for that to happen and become a reality, we must consider adjusting our diets and lifestyles to not rely upon drugs to give us temporary relief because of our overindulgences. We have to wonder, how can soul food be good for your soul? Or the standard American diet be the standard when it's so sad? 
These diets are just a few comprised of high saturated fat, high cholesterol, low fiber, low enzymes, and high protein content. This in itself will overtax your body, especially the digestive system, primarily due to the high demand of self-gluttony, which the human body cannot compensate for. Unless one eats like this very sparingly and incorporate an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables, cardiovascular, amongst other diseases, is imminent. For a very simple and effective way to counteract the ill effects of high saturated fat and cholesterol, which severely packs on the pounds, refer to the chapter, A New Start to Optimal Digestion. You also have those who might say, you have to die from something. So why not enjoy your life now? Because life is short. And short it is, with heart disease, cancer, and stroke on the rise. Also, walking around like a zombie with Alzheimer's disease. Not to mention playing Russian roulette when you're in a doctor's care. Not only will you live a short life, but go on to suffer hard and long before you die. That's the reality of it, people. You just have to be willing to look at the big picture, taking into account a few things, mainly the family and friends you'll leave behind, them suffering because you unnecessarily suffered, the poor legacy that you'll leave your children, and if you have them, nieces, nephews, and grandchildren. Last but not least, the Lord and God who you will greatly disappoint by not letting your light so shine to all the world so you could set a good example of moderation as a Christian and child of God. The human body has an innate or inherent ability to self-correct. So let us trust in the Lord always and lean not to our own understanding. Remember, the arm of flesh will fail you every time. God knows exactly what's best for the human body because he made it from the ground up. All man does is try to figure out what God has already worked out from the beginning. Now that you've listened to this brief yet informative segment of chapter one, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was enlightening and encouraging to you. If you like what you heard, you'll love the rest of the book. I really lay it out in fascinating detail, the complete digestive system in a simple yet intricate way, covering all significant points. I believe after you've read it, you'll be amazed and utterly awed at how simple it is to be healthy as well as how easy it is to be deceived and shystered by flimflam artists selling colon cleanses, kooky advice, and cure-alls. The information contained in the book will arm you to be more prepared to tackle your own health challenges and work with your healthcare provider. My hope and prayer is that you have a prosperous, happier, and healthy life. Thank you for listening.